welcome. We are here with Come Up Higher Ministries, correct? And this is their second annual relationship conference, and it's going to be held on April 21st, 2018. And the theme this year is before, during, and after the I do. This is exciting. So I'm going to let the ladies expound. This is Robin and Rashonda. Please expound on the conference and tell us why all the single ladies, the men, the married, the divorced, the thinking about it, engaged, should be at this conference. So give us some words, Rashonda. So this relationship conference is like no other. It's different. We are going to have some DJing going on. We're going to have a lot of fun activities. We're going to have breakout sessions for Divorce and Widow. We also have um, Willie Moore Jr. and his lovely wife Patricia Moore Jr. coming in and speaking to the singles and married. Awesome. So it's a different spiel than we did last year. We still had the panel discussion, but it was all men. This year we're incorporating men and women. Oh. And so we're going to have just a good time. Um, we're going to talk about just various aspects of relationships and we're going to be a question and answer segment as well so okay, we're encouraging everyone to come out great so Robin can you give us some more insight on the conference why yeah. should we be there so this conference is unique because it encompasses all aspects of relationships mm -hmm. so we're going to be looking at like last year uh, we started off talking about health so it's important that you look at something that pertains to your lifestyle um, as a part of the relationship so this year we're focusing on finances. So we'll have a segment on finances. And then as Rashonda mentioned, we're, we have um, set sessions for widow and divorce because okay. although they are single, they are yeah. dealing with different issues than your average exactly. single person. Yeah. So we want to make sure we have an opportunity for their issues and concerns to be addressed as well. And we'll have um, facilitators that have been in those situations okay, that can assist with that. So it seems like they have left no stone unturned. So you have no excuses not to be there. So be there April 21st, 2018. At what time, ladies? It starts promptly at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Don't miss it. Okay. Yeah. At the Greenbelt Marriott. Did you hear that? So Greenbelt Marriott. And I do just want to add, um, last year it was all women. And we did a survey at the end, and the women were like, we really wish our, our significant a others, our husbands were here. Yes. So we strongly encourage the men to come out this year, yes. single, married, widow, divorced, engaged, um, because it's something for both men and women. Okay, so men, the call has been put out to you. <laughs> we need you at the conference, okay? April 21st at the Greenbelt Marriott. You can come early at 8 o'clock, and I'll be at the door waiting, okay? <laughs> So, we have some questions for you ladies. Give them a, we're going to give a sneak peek on what type of questions and answers and how the audience, once they all arrive, can partake in this interactive question and answer period. So, I'm going to give you some questions and you guys, the best of your ability, just, you know, give us some good answers, okay? So, that may generate me to ask another question. So, I'm going to start with Robin. What are your views on dating before marriage? So what are your views on dating? Um, I like to use the word courting. Courting, okay. Um, because dating is kind of loose. It's just kind of, you know, you're just out there. Right. But courting adds a little more significance to it, okay. meaning you're really serious, you're intentional about um, seeing this person and perhaps taking it to the next level, which would be marriage. So I think it's important. Um, you definitely need to take your time with it, mm -hmm. um, but you need to be serious and intentional about it so that you don't waste each other's time. Okay, so before courtship, what would you call that period? Before they can even, you know, categorize it as courting, is it dating or they're just friends? They're, they're just friends. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, so they're moving from a friend stage, in your opinion, to courtship. Yes. Okay, got it. And Rashonda, what are your views on dating slash courting? I would say it's similar. Um, I guess as far as the friend, just friends, just friends getting to know each other more. Okay. 
um, before the courtship and then you kind of find your way of if it's even worth even going to courting if it's someone that I actually want to spend the rest of okay. my life with mm -hmm. so I believe that building that strong relationship as far as friends mm -hmm. and not being sexual for one because that mm -hmm. really messes a lot yeah. of things up it, it, it makes your vision a little different you don't see things how you really should see it so the friendship I believe is is good so I guess it's always that it's always a topic about like what dating is and you know should you date should you not date right. like if you're Christian like is it courting and so I think dating can be a different definition for everyone so mm -hmm. like dating could be oh we're just friends or we're just casually going out having a good time and then if we see where it goes if it's not a good fit for me then you know I can I'm open to date other people right so I still think it's, it's like we said before it's good to have communication mm -hmm. so that you set that those ground rules of what are you actually looking for because sometimes if both parties are on the same page you know right. like you're looking to maybe date and mm -hmm. be friends and maybe court and get married and the other person's like oh I'm just out here just having fun right. and so mm -hmm. if you don't communicate that with each other then that's where the feelings and emotions yes. and you know heartbreak can yes. take place so. so I'm going to challenge when you guys view this video we need answers because I hear three different terminologies and I want your opinion, and I'm, I'm sure we can probably bring this to the conference. What's your definition of friendship, your definition of dating, your definition of courtship or courting? So what are the stages that you think a person should take, Christian-based and non-Christian-based? How do you view it? We want your responses, okay? All righty, that was a good one. Thank you. So I have more questions. So the next question, we're going to start with Rashawn to give Robin a break. <laughs> How long should you date or court before you become exclusive? And then there's a B question. Explain exclusive, please. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, again, communication is key. I personally say I need a year. Okay. Because people act different in all seasons. So mm -hmm. you have four seasons. <laughs> um, so, you know, sometimes you can be loving and winter. <laughs> That's and right. And summertime you break out and you're ready to just have fun. So That's right. So I think being with a person and seeing how they are in the, in the different four seasons is mm -hmm. good. So I think a year is a good time to, like, really get to know a person. I know they say six months, but I need, I need some more time. Um, so I think a year is a good time. Um, as far as being exclusive. Now, before you move on to okay. answer exclusive... How do you, as a female, and I know we are nurturing people, mm -hmm. and we care immediately before maybe a, a guy maybe even think of, maybe he even thinks about it. Mm -hmm. How do you contain your emotions for a year, even if that year has approached and it's not working? Can you just walk away, and your emotions are already tied? The old me no, the new me yes. Okay. Because I've gone through those moments where I've dated and I'm all in and I'm thinking yes. we're going to get married and then yes. it's like, nope, he's not the one. And then so I've, I believe I've learned how to just not be so emotional and look at right. it more on a logical standpoint. Okay. And then I, I don't want to say that I take on a, a, a male mentality. But I you think just don't put woman, all your eggs in yeah, one basket. I think as a woman, front. we should okay. study how they are, how they mm -hmm. interact with us, just so we can know the signs. Because I believe that a man will tell you from his actions, from his actions mm -hmm. what he feels, what he's looking for from the very beginning. Okay. That's just how they operate. And we sometimes may look in it, look in it more than what it is, mm -hmm. or sometimes we just all in and we paint this wonderful picture of what we think the relationship is going to be. And then when it doesn't right. happen that way, then we're disappointed yes. and then we're, we're heartbroken. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good to just take a step back mm -hmm. and to not, you know, allow your emotions to take over, but just let every day be what it is and right. not think about it so much or put too don't much jump to the altar to, before to, you to, become yeah. friends okay yeah, just be friends just have fun just okay. go out and enjoy life okay. um and as far as being exclusive i believe that the to me i think the man should take that step of saying i really think this should go further because the man is the seeker yeah. right he's the one who seeks and finds his wife so 
I believe that in that aspect, we shouldn't take that step in thinking that it's more than what it is. Because I think sometimes as women, we become exclusive too soon. Okay. <laughs> and our mind and, and, and our, our mind is like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm, I'm all in. This is it for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm all in. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, and then if it doesn't go how we envision it in our mind, it's like, oh, well, I thought it was going to be this way and it right. wasn't. So I think in that aspect, both parties need to say yes. I'm right. ready to, and I, and I believe the man should be the initiative. Like he should take that initiative and say, "Hey, okay. like I'm, I'm feeling a little something else here. Like, okay. what are your views? What are your thoughts?" And then we should follow suit. Okay. So now, and Robin, get open. Robin, it's 2018, and we have females now. Rashonda said, "Wait for the man, you know, to take the first step." And we know biblical sense says, "A man, if a man finds a woman, he finds a good thing." Now we have some really aggressive women mm -hmm. in 2018. What's your view on that? And I would love to have a man's perspective right now, <laughs> but they're not here at the moment. So give me your view. If a woman comes forward and, you know, trumps the man, if I can use that word, and she's ready to push forward. What do you think? What do you think about that? And it's 2018. We have some really aggressive women that, you know, that's my man and I'm going for it. I, I still agree that he that finds a wife finds a good thing. Okay. And as Rashonda said, you will know early on if he is thinking that you're the one. Okay. So to be the one to say, will you marry me? No. Okay. Um, you need to let the man be the man. Mm -hmm. um, because even though it's 2018, men want to feel like they're men. Mm -hmm. They want, they know certain roles that even society has given them. So they want to be the ones to ask the question and, right. and to get down on the knee and, and all of that. Right. So I, I, I don't believe a woman should be the one to okay. initiate. Okay, all right. And what are your, what's your view on, when do we become exclusive? We've been, we've been seeing each other as friends for a year. So. Do we, if it goes beyond a year and the man still hasn't come forward and say, hey, let's take it to the next level. What should a, a, a young lady do? What Ask the question. Do? Ask him the question mm -hmm. as, where, where are, are we? we? What are we doing? What are we What's doing? What's your plan? Okay. We've been dating a year, you know, or, 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 or are we looking towards marriage? Do you want, what, what do you want from this relationship? Okay. It's okay to ask that type yes. of question mm -hmm. because if you don't and you're just hoping or you're going off of some, a sign that you've had and, you know, you right. may be looking at things incorrectly, mm -hmm. then you're, you could be wasting your time. Right. So, you okay. know, six months, a year, you know, each woman is different. They'll know how long mm -hmm. they need before they need to ask that question. Okay. But definitely ask the question if he hasn't initiated something. Okay, all right. Okay, so you agree with the year, at least, minimum, being friends? To, to me, a year is, is a long time. Mm -hmm. um, six months, definitely. Okay. Um, but again, like that's why I said with each person, it, it can vary. Okay. You know, even with myself, uh, my husband and I dated for eight years. Okay. Um, but I knew way before then that we were going to be married but there were some things that god had to work out in both of us before god, that happened eight years okay yeah. new beginnings yes <laughs> so, <laughs> and it definitely was right <laughs> yes, <it> was. <laughs> so another one how much is too much before you walk away from a relationship and what what's the what's the flags that will say hey this is not working for me and let's just just say six months in to a year, what's the deal breaker? Can you give me some examples of that, Robin? Um, deal breaker for me um, was not a relationship with God, not even trying to have one. Okay. And I don't mean... Um, Did you give them the benefit of the doubt in the beginning? Like, hey, maybe, you know, you can take him to Christ. Do you allow that period? Or if he doesn't even observe God in the beginning, you're done? Well, yeah, if, if I'm, if I was dating and someone's trying to date me and they're mm -hmm. not even thinking about God, okay, you know, we can be friends, you know, and then it, as they're observing me and if they start to come to church, See your possibly, but we're not mm -hmm. going to start hanging out and you don't even, you're not okay. even trying to get with God. And I have a, before you move on, so just say you give it a, you give it a little try, let's say three months in 
And he knows you go to church on a regular. You're at Bible study. You're going to prayer meeting. You're going to Sunday service. And you may have to go back for evening service. He sees your way of life as, and you're following Christ. What if this moment he asks you to, he, he approach you and invite you to accompany him to an event that's not of God? What's your position? So... When you say that's not of God. But you, you're, you're liking him. Let's say that we're going to a cabaret or something like that. And they're playing R&B music. Is that something that we should do, you know, to come into his world? Or how do we have a happy medium? And we're trying to be friends to move to courtship. Do we do those things? Personally, um, I don't have a problem with going to a party, a cabaret. Okay. Um, depends on where it is, it depends on the environment, it depends on who's hosting, okay. what all is going to be there. I mean, there are other variables to look at with that. Okay. But, you know, when you get married, you're not going to be listening to um, Amazing Grace when you're trying to be intimate with your husband. Right. So you, you're going to have those times where okay. you, you need to be able to party and have a good time and, and, and dance. You know, I, I don't believe that, you know, dancing and listening to R&B music is okay. wrong. But as a single, you do need to be mindful of mm -hmm. what you're listening to because mm -hmm. the lyrics, a lot of the lyrics nowadays are so um, explicit, explicit mm -hmm. you know, they're <laughs> sexual. So, you know, you have to you have to set your boundaries. OK, mm -hmm. so I'm going to take you back to what's the deal breaker? When do you walk away? So I'm bring you back to that mm -hmm. question. So I'll let you finish that up. Okay. So I had two deal breakers. Um, the one was the relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. um, I need to I need to see some movement in that area. Okay. Um, the other was um, financial. Okay. Um, I need to see that you are financially stable, okay. stable, or have the means to be. You know, yeah. I understand some people um, may have just lost a job or whatever, but what are you doing? You know, he's got to be a provider. Right. Okay. All right. So, Rashonda, what what are some deal breakers for you? And what's going to tell tell you I, I have to get up out of here, girl. I can't do this. So, what are your what are your walk away? Has to have a job. Yes, okay. like to, basically what Robin said. He has to have a job. Can Just, he work at McDonald's? I'm not against McDonald's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably try no to No pun him. intended. Yeah. <laughs> I would try to push him, to try to encourage him to take another career, but I'm not going to judge him because he's not right. Okay. But um, another, I guess another deal breaker for me is, is he does, definitely has to be saved. And, and I, I see the godly man that he is okay. um, manifested for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but yeah, I think, I think being a provider, because that's the, the man's role. Okay. Um, and you know, us as women, we need security. We need to, you know, make sure that we will have that security and being feel that safe. security. Yes. Yes. So, um, being a provider is very, very key. Okay. And you know, for me, growing up and seeing my father and seeing the example that he showed me, mm -hmm. um, that's what I look for right. in, a, in, in a man. Now, so. I'm going to take you both here for a second, and I'm going to be transparent for a, transparent for a second. I just love to see a man that's a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that can fix a car, that can fix a light switch, that can put a simple handle on a toilet or something like that. I just think that's sexy to me. You know, that's something that's really um, something that I would like to see in a man. Now, is there signs or things that you totally ignored in prior relationships? just to keep your relationship going? Were there flags that you said, oh, that's not too bad. I, but then it morphed into something that, hey, I got to go. So do you have, did you have any of those incidents that where, uh, you know, I can probably deal with that, but over time it, it, it morphed into something else. Was, was there something like that for you, Robin? Um, yes, there was actually. Um... Um, this is my second marriage. So, okay. um, in my first marriage when I was There's dating. There's hope for me. <laughs> um, before I got married the first time, um, I, the spirit of control was there, uh -huh. but I said, oh, he just really loves me. Yes. And pause. I was there. Keep you going. Know, so, <laughs> um, in, in different aspects, you know, that was a red flag that I turned it into saying, yes. you know, he really loves me. I.e., you know, 
Um, I was living in Atlanta at the time and they were insistent that I move mm -hmm. to this area mm -hmm. um, before I was really ready and they were like, no, you need to come now. And I was like, oh, he just really loves me. He wants yeah. me to be there. And then, you know, once I'm here, then other things, you know, and I covered it up again, but right. you know, really, mm -hmm. you really have to pay attention and you really have to um, stand your ground. Mm -hmm. You know, as a single woman, you have to stand your ground and, and maintain your boundaries and not get caught up in the emotion of you know getting married and, and dating and you know for me I was 30 years old and I mm -hmm. you know I was going my clock is ticking I got to get married mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. gonna have kids yada mm -hmm. yada yada mm -hmm. you know so I, I compromised right. on uh, my standards and my boundaries right. right now I hope at the relationship conference that there's a breakout session for domestic violence and some signs because that's something that my mom's been through I've been through and like you said, we say, okay, he really loves me. Oh, he wouldn't, you know, act this way, you know, want me to stay here with him and go everywhere with him. I've been there. And sometimes you ignore those signs to say, let me put my all in it because he's showing that he really loves me. When it's your first sign, girl, you best to run. But, you know, so I'm hoping that that's there. Just a little tidbit. So I have one more question, if that's okay for you ladies. How do you feel, and I think we heard this before, but we want you to elaborate on it some more. How do you feel about dating someone that's probably uh, a divorcee, kids, and then we said no job will have just kids and no job and um, divorce. Do you have any issues with that? Um, and what do you think about it? I'm not against kid children. I don't have children. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's my prayer that we share that together. Okay. But I'm not against him having kids. Um, not of any age. Yeah. Baby, no. toddler, teenager. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not against, I'm not against children at all. Um, okay. As far as you said, you said jobs and... No job, no, divorce. Divorce is not an issue. It's... As far as communication, we will have to talk out, like you know. Okay, so you had some hesitation there, so it's yeah. some it's some bullet points under there. Yeah, like, some bullet divorce points. Divorce because, because you want to know like, why, why, you know, <laughs> and yeah. So we will have to have some communication okay. there. Um, but as far as um, a job, like I said, I, I think a man should be know, a provider. Be a provider, and. But I know there are certain circumstances where it's, you know things happen, and he may be out of a job. So I'm, so I'm open to you know being supportive. Okay. Now that. as you meet this wonderful guy, he has two kids, one boy, one girl, one three, one five. But he's been divorced four times. Is that okay for it, with you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make it clear. Time. Yeah, four I just want to make it clear. Yeah. <laughs> Four times we won't, it's some fasting and praying we <laughs> together. Um, we're going to have to do that together. God's going to have to give me a sign because. It, yeah, because there's, like, there's why, four. Like, why, yeah, why so many. And he's the common denominator. Yeah, yeah. Something is wrong. Something yeah. is seriously wrong. Um, and it's not the other person. Right. <laughs> Most of the time. We've been married four times then. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'd be a lot of fasting and praying and, and okay. that's. Okay, really simple question here, and we're going to close it really from here, really well. <laughs> what was the longest relationship you had? And give us the, the highlight that you remember from that relationship that helped you move forward. The longest, let me start with Robin. <laughs> the longest relationship I had is with my current husband. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what was the major highlight? Like you can remember one just off the top of your head. What was like, wow, this man is it for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I think when he um, came up with a plan to help me get out of debt financially. Mm -hmm. um, that showed me that he was really concerned yes. um, about me and didn't expect me to pay him back, you know, for anything that he would have done to help yeah. in that situation. He invested. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Tissue. Well, <that's> nice. <laughs> Rashonda, what about you? Your longest My relationship? My longest was a year and a half. Okay. Um, She's and... a tough cookie over there. <laughs> a year... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was a year and a half, and... So, what was the second part of the question? You said? The highlight moment that made you even last a year. What was that? Yes, I'm going to give it a shot. He was, he's, he was a music head. I'm, I love music. Okay. Um, I'm a sucker for a man that, that can play the piano. Okay. Um, so that was, I think that was the, because we both, guy? yeah. I'm a sucker for a man that can play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So uh, that's what drew me to, you know, I was like, oh, he's into music and okay. you know, that's what I like and yeah. he can play the piano. And not just that, but just all types of instruments. I love music. So I think that was the aha moment okay. for me and I was like yeah I can see myself staying with this person awesome. Awesome. well ladies this was great thank you for taking the time for the interview so once again we invite you back to our before during and after the I do come up higher ministries we're going live on April 21st 2018 at the Greenbelt Marriott we'll see you at 9 a.m.